Good evening, Canton community. My name is Sabatino Samato. I am your superintendent, and this is your weekly connection update. Um, we're going to focus on a, a few topics today in the connection. First, I want to give everyone an academic update. Then we're going to talk about the budget vote that's just around the corner. And then we're going to finish with our recognition. So let's get going for today. Uh, folks, I've heard from a lot of residents, a lot of our community members, that they are still confused about how numbers work in this pandemic. I want to take a little bit of time to just try and break this down a little bit today. So we've heard a lot about uh, from our CDC, from our New York State Department of Health, even from our Erie County Department of Health, what it means to have uh, these different zones. And it, it focuses on, I want us to focus on the number of cases per 100,000 residents, and that's over a seven day average. So folks, the magic number is 100. You have to have less than 100 cases per 100,000, 99 cases to be exact, to be in that safe enough zone for uh, middle schoolers and high schoolers to return to three feet of instruction without cohorting. As we've talked about in the past in Kenton, we do not cohort our middle schoolers and our high schoolers. That's why we could only return um, under the current guidance our elementary students. So this confusion on this number of 99 per 100,000, well, what does that mean in Erie County, many people will ask me. In Erie County, we have approximately 918,000 residents, and that's what that number is based on the regional number. So if you take that proportion, it's basically nine times that number of 99. Okay, so we would be looking out of our 918,000 residents, about 909 total cases over seven days. Now remember, it talks about average. So you take that 909, divide it by seven, and you're looking at really about 130 um, cases around there for the average every day in over a seven day period. I know that's very confusing. That would get us to that proportionate ratio of the less than 100 per 100,000. Remember we have 900,000 in Erie County. Total over those seven days around 909. When you divide it by seven, that daily mark turns into be about 130 cases a day. So if you've been looking at our cases, we're dropping drastically. Um, in our in our region, um, just over a week ago, we were over 260 cases, and recently we're down to I think 136 was the last that I saw, um, which really starts bringing us closer to that magic number of where we'd have to get to. But folks, um, I, I want a full disclosure and full transparent. There also gets a point in the year a point in this planning, a point where you're trying to shift in the pandemic, where it really starts to, um, we have to start to look at, does it make sense for future shifting in the program? I just want to talk to you about some problems that we're facing still at secondary. Now, we're not there yet. We haven't even reached that magic number. So there's only about five weeks left in the school year. We do have probably, well, at least in my opinion, the best secondary model that currently exists. Because remember, even though our kids go to school two days in person, they're receiving four days of synchronous, we call it simultaneous instruction, because the teachers are teaching both in person and online. But these problems still exist. Contact tracing, for example. In a secondary school, contact tracing for everyone right now is six feet. We face that problem in elementary. We knew that that was one of the risks. I'll talk a little bit about that risk and what we faced in the past two weeks a little bit later in, in this uh, weekly connection. But contact tracing remains six feet. In a secondary school, kids change classes. They're going uh, to different classrooms, different students, and that could potentially lead to a very large number of students being quarantined for every child that might be positive. That is a major problem that we would face. Um, the changes to daily procedures. Now, um, Kenton community, you have to know, to be able to get the elementary students back. In our elementary schools, very tiny classrooms, we had basically tables. Uh, that's what we use, and that was thought to be great practice before this pandemic hit. But when we were able to bring kids back, all of our kids back to five days in person at the elementary level, we had to move a lot of that furniture out. We had to 
bag, borrow, steal, plead from our middle schools to bring desks to our elementary schools. So there was a lot of movement that took place just in order to get that elementary back to five days of instruction. That's just one. Looking at things like um, how would we do lunch and breakfast? What about transportation? So remember how much we talked about how difficult it was at the elementary level to have to eat six feet apart um, when you know some of our elementary schools have a, a total of just over 200 students. Some are as large as 600. Some of our high schools, for example, are as large as 1,200 students. And trying to figure out those logistics are a nightmare. Um, and we have to stick to six feet while eating, while in chorus, while in phys ed. So some of the things that we might even have in place for hybrid, for instruction to happen now, the different areas that we're using, then we would have to do an about face and a, a major shift in not only furniture, not only scheduling, but just where kids go during the day. Um, it, it really would be a, a huge challenge. Our teams have figured a lot of that out. I'm just telling you where all this is. Um, remember also three feet of social distancing is permissible during instruction, but not for these other times, like I just mentioned, transition, um, during eating times, uh, band or chorus, uh, physical education, and the list goes on and on. Our secondary schools have really, uh, implemented that effective model. And the, the other thing that is a little, uh, nerve wracking about this is that, if we get under that number um, where we could return back at the secondary level, what happens if there's a little hiccup in society and it goes over that number the next week? Then would we have to transition back? So you can see uh, the elementary did not have those requirements in the guidance the way that secondary does. And um, a lot of that has me extremely uneasy. I wanted to be clear with our community today. It does not look likely that our secondary would return this year to that four days a week in person. Um, as we go further down, like I said, we have not reached that threshold yet. There's uh, five weeks of in-person instruction. By the time we would transition, um, I am uh, very sensitive to making sure that uh, all the planning that's being done for the end of the year, especially for our seniors at both of our high schools, that um, nothing interferes with that. The blessing of our secondary schools right now is that even though they're in hybrid, if we did get an infected uh, case, a, a student that uh, came, uh, did was infected with the virus, we really were not seeing major quarantines because they are six feet apart. And um, all of that uh, contributes. So um, folks, I just wanted to be clear. Um, I just wanted to talk about that and, and really make sure that everybody knows everything that I know at this time. And um, I also want us to be realistic in where we are. And um, every day of in-person instruction is important. Um, but I also have to be very cautious on making sure that I'm not doing more harm than good, whether it's instructional model or to any of our kids or to make sure. And I don't want to make it even um, more impossible for uh, teachers to give the provide the best instruction, which uh, all of our teachers have been doing all along. Um, quarantine, I said that I would uh, talk about this a little bit later in the connection, and this is it. Um, we've had a great success with our K through four uh, return. We really have. Um, we were a little fearful that could we ever uh, could it ever result in uh, an entire class being quarantined. We've seen some of these throughout the region, um, including we did have one class in Kenton this past week uh, that had to quarantine. Now, I'm going to full disclosure, it's really suspected that multiple students came into the room and uh, were infected from an outside source. So something that did not happen in school. Now, you know how this works in the science of this. I never want to speak in, in definites or definitives. Um, but it, it really does look that way. But nonetheless, um, because of the amount of students, there were multiple students in one classroom. Uh, that, uh, that decision to quarantine that entire classroom uh, was made. And a very difficult decision. It's been tough on those kids, tough on those families. And um, 
you know, folks, we, we'll get to a time that we're not talking about quarantine anymore. Um, but unfortunately, trying to do the best that we can right now. And uh, I appreciate everybody's uh, uh, patience with it. And we'll continue to get through this together. But full disclosure, want to make sure our community understands we've made tremendous progress. We have not had a lot of cases. Cases have been going down, but these are still some of the things that we face. Now, planning for the future. And it's it's so wonderful to actually see. I feel like we can see, we could not only see the light at the end of the tunnel, we could feel the light at the end of the tunnel. We, we know that we're coming out of this. Um, I feel pretty good about September. Guidance has not come out for September yet. Um, but something that we have to be cognizant of is that we will be um, facing the the effects of the pandemic for years to come years to come and i'm very happy to say on on one hand um as we start to return to normalcy we look at budgets and our budget this year uh we're we're going to be having um uh, our budget vote coming up and uh our budget this year is only a 1.98 percent increase it really is well below our historical average here in kenton um, so really great kudos. And we offer some of the best programming in Kenton. We really do. And we'll continue to refine our programming, continuing to make it more strategic. But we're also going to have to continue to address that learning loss for a long time to come with this uh, from this pandemic. So I, I just want us to all be cognizant how important it is uh, for our budget vote. May 18th, the budget vote will take place as well as the Board of Education elect election. Voting will take place from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. on Tuesday, May 18th at Hoover Middle School. Please use the Sheridan Drive entrance uh, of Hoover. And please note that in-person voting resumes this year. There still is the ability to request an absentee ballot for qualified reasons. by That, that would have to be by May 11th to request that absentee ballot. But in-person voting is Tuesday, May 18th at Hoover. More information about voting um, and absolutely our plan for the future can be found at ktufsd.org slash forward slash budget. Um, a, big, uh, a big thank you and a congratulations to our community and our Board of Education for everything that they've done to really uh, come together and be supportive um, with our staff here in Kenton. Um, to really make the not only the best of this year, but to develop the best future that we have for our families and children. We're definitely on the move and we're on the rise. Um, recognitions, finishing with recognition. Speaking of on the rise, you don't get a bigger, a better, um, a more uh, recognized um, people in our community than our teachers and our nurses. Um, today celebrates uh we're coming to the conclusion of teacher uh, appreciation week we just started a week of appreciation for nurses yesterday um, throughout our society we we've recognized our nurses before um, we always know the quality nurses and teachers that we have but let me just give you some facts about both today the final day of teacher appreciation week we recognize all of our educators in every school grade level and content area we not only recognize our classroom teachers, but all who are part of the professional teaching staff, including the instructional support specialists, school counselors, psychologists, and social workers. These professionals have such profound impact on the lives of our students on a daily basis. Throughout history, Kenton has always been known for its high quality educators. Trust me, not only did I grow up in Kenton and know of the educators, you always, in this community, this Western New York com community, everyone always knows about the quality in Kenton. Fostering a world-class teaching staff has been a priority for our district for a long time. An example of world-class teaching is the Kenton District Mentor Program, right here in Kenton, a model program that was started well before my time by wonderful educators in Kenton. The purpose of the mentor program is to place experienced and skilled educators with new teachers who are just beginning their careers. Collaboration with the, also the Staff Development Center provide training and professional development to our staff on a yearly basis. Our teachers supporting teachers model 
is enhanced by the instructional support specialists, experienced educators who coach and support teachers in specific content areas. Folks, the three parts of everything, those three parts that I just mentioned, everything about our teachers is that they never feel like they've like they're done, their learning's done, or they've made it and they don't have to continue learning themselves. We have a culture in Kenton that has been here for a long time, a culture that cultivates learning, not only with our students, but with our teachers and our teachers and our staff. This is what makes them truly second to none. These initiatives have established a legacy of fine educators that are second to none in our region and has served as a model for other districts. It is no surprise that Kenton has so many national board certified teachers, New York State master teachers, and others who have achieved the highest distinctions in their profession, and the list goes on and on. Congratulations to our teachers. You deserve everything, especially this year. I am proud to be in Kenton with folks like we have here. Additionally, our district is lucky to have the nurses that we have working with our teachers, with our students, with our families on a daily basis. Now folks, we we really focused on the nurses in an earlier weekly connection. I wanna bring us back around to the fact that these individuals have always been on the front line for us through this entire process. What I've come to know of our nurses is that they look at me and they look at our, at our, at our staff and say, what, what can we do? What can, it, it's like that player just waiting to get into the game and do whatever they can do to help the team. That's what our nurses have always been. Led by wonderful Deb Carey. Um, and I, I've listed all of our nurses by name in the past because they are absolutely individuals that work as a team and that team's only focus is our safety, our health in Kenton. Those nurses are second to none in our community. And we really thank you and appreciate everything that you do on a daily basis. And our final recognition this week goes without being said, just a happy Mother's Day this week. To all of our mothers that are out there, whether they are our staff, our uh, tremendous mothers of our students, um, just our mothers in our community. Everything that you've done, everything that you do every year is, is just bar none. Moms are the best. They always have been for everyone in our community. But mothers this year have just done so much for their families, for our community. Happy Mother's Day. Really enjoy this Sunday coming up. Moms, you really deserve it. So that brings us to the end of our weekly connection. And uh, folks, um, I, I hope you can appreciate that uh, I'm sharing this academic, uh, especially in the beginning part of this section today for the Weekly Connection. We've made tremendous progress. We really have. Um, as your superintendent, I always like to be realistic with the community. I do not want to deliver empty promises. Uh, I do always want you informed of my best thinking, our best thinking as a team, um, our, our thinking generates from suggestions that families give us and our teachers um, to across our community. And it really does make up um, why we've, we've been, um, I think, very, very successful during this very, very trying time. Uh, let's hang in there where we can, we can see the end in sight. Uh, we're not quite there yet. We'll continue to work together. We'll continue to provide the best for our kids. And we'll wait. You know, those, those numbers have not changed yet. Designations have not changed yet. But I wanted to be uh, fully transparent with at least what I see where we are. And we will figure this out together. Together, we are Kenton Strong. Together, we will continue to be proud members of our Kenton community. And together, we will continue moving our community forward. Thank you very much for everything that you continue to do. Please have a great weekend.